Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here at reInvent, AWS's annual conference 2023. I'm John Furrier, your host, Dave Vellante is in the analyst session. Shelly Kramer is running around getting through George Hilbert's here. Rob Hof, Mark Albertson, the whole team coverage and the group in Palo Alto with the live stream and studio action. Um, excited to have a great guest here from VMware program, Betty, who've been on theCUBE before, VP of Marketing, the Tanzu division. Great to see you. Always a pleasure. Great to have you. I saw you in Barcelona mm -hmm. for VMware Explorer. I heard that was packed. Yes, it was very lively. <laughs> and I saw you here, too, like in a different setting, but also <laughs> Vegas. Great, we're in the ago. press area, we're at our set here. We got the Palo Alto studio, we were in a set yesterday, MongoDB. We had, we've had VMware on before. Mm -hmm. Narayan came on with AWS. Fred, done yeah. with VMware Cloud on AWS, has produced a lot of great success Mm -hmm. Simplification, Tanzu's doing the same thing with Tanzu Application Platform, Tanzu Application Service, plus the data and the intelligence piece kind of put together, yep. kind of nice clean packaging yes. for developers. That's developers and um, platform teams really, right? Um, just when you look at the ecosystem, there's so much, even just within um, AWS itself. Sometimes it's about how do we stitch all that together, mm -hmm. right? And we know with large enterprises, you know, they have a large, they have an investment in clouds like AWS, and then they have something on-prem. So, stitching that across hybrid, I mean, that's really where we shine. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about what you're working on now. I mean, look at the uh, industry. So the Tanzu thing I find is very fascinating because as VMware was restructuring with Broadcom, the clarity is clear. You got the yep. install base, VCS, VCF the vSphere, that whole core mm -hmm. base, and the Tanzu was with super cloud and all the cloud native stuff, you got Kubernetes and, and, and Cloud Foundry and Spring, which you ran that mm -hmm. big event, uh, all kind of speaks to this developer. And with, with this show here, I want to get your reaction to what you're seeing at AWS reInvent, because Adam laid out the three layer stack, we had the exclusive on SiliconANGLE, um, and then it's interesting, because it's like, this is a foundation model kind of stack, it's a Gen AI stack, mm -hmm. We're expecting a developer feeding frenzy to kick the tires, at least, so to speak, on yeah. the LLM layer. But that means the data and everything's got on the infrastructure, the platform engineering and data engineers merging. Yes, absolutely. What's your vision for this? What are you seeing? Well, you know, what I think is um, uh, there's definitely going to have to be, and you've already seen it, innovation at the infrastructure layer, right? And then infrastructure and data coming together because you need to make sure that the infrastructure can handle not only moving that data around quickly, as well as can it run the models, can that be fast and efficient, but then also an experience layer. Right, so we're doing that from a application, uh, enabling the application developer to write the code. Mm -hmm. But we'll also need to do something like that for like, how do I then bring the, um, uh, you know, the, the AI elements, like the AI tooling into the app, as well as how do I know which data elements to attach to this, right? So I think there's going to be another wave around like the developer enablement, um, because you know, it's what Gen AI has done is like it's taken it out of the realm of just a few highly specialized data scientists, and now it's like available for everyone. It's yeah. the same kind of thing that um, I'm going to go a little bit um, back in memory lane. You know, virtualization has always existed, but it took x86 um, and then VMware to commoditize and make it available for the masses. Uh, Linux containers, that kind of, that always existed in the Linux kernel, but it took Docker to put a really easy interface so that it's available to the every person. And I think Gen AI, Gen AI like that has done that um, for this area of like, you know, doing very interesting things with mass amounts of data. So there's going to be a explosion in new tooling around it. Yeah. So that we're going to have to solve the same problems again. <laughs> how do you secure it? How do you, you know, control the chain yeah. <laughs> of data? And then how do you then allow people to like manipulate and use it? Effectively. I mean, we've seen this movie before. You yeah. tool sprawl. Totally. Tool sprawl was gonna, is going to come, and maybe AI can help the tool sprawl. I was just talking with Eric Brandwine, who runs this VP, and he runs, uh, yeah, he's a decision engineer at Amazon. He, he's part of the security team. Amazon just reorganized their security team to have one for the entire companies. Yeah. And he said the problem is that some of the tools don't match, yes. and the data share, it's a complicated situation. 100%. And so as you have these complex workloads, because AI will be complex under the hood, mm -hmm. it'll look easy to the front end, because yeah. that's like the new interface, but there's a lot going on under the covers. Yes. So this is going to be complex. So, you know, you know, the enterprise people, they want to solve complexity with more complexity. But that's, you, you <laughs> no, can't do that simplify. here. you can't, you can't simplify. You can't do that here, you, you yeah. got to simplify. Yes, well first, I mean, the, the idea of having to attack the, the problem set, that is complex because, you know, it's, cha it's, 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 uh, it's changed a paradigm in a way, right? So security in an AI model, well, maybe that'll be different than how we secured physical servers or virtual networks or whatever, mm -hmm. right, application code. But we'll still have to solve it, and mm -hmm. then once those 
puzzle pieces have been solved, you still need like um, uh, the ecosystem to come together and simplify it. Otherwise, you can't put that burden on the customer. No, no. That's impossible. And or the developer. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean. Yeah. I mean, the developer, the, the whole security paradigm, remember the whole early days of shift left, how oh that's evolved. <laughs> we're seeing, I have opinions we're, there. <laughs> okay, I want to hear them because I want to throw something at you, at you on this. So we're seeing data conversations have the similar trajectory where we hear from words like guardrails, heard that mm -hmm. in the keynote yesterday, or hey, you get data into the pipeline so the developers can make policy and governance mm -hmm. decisions at the point of coding in the CICD pipeline. So, okay, that's, we're seeing this same kind of movie again. Yep. Security, now data. So the data engineer, or platform engineer, those roles are coming together and I had uh, uh, astronomer on earlier, uh, fast growing company, they came out of Airflow, which Airbnb did mm -hmm. in open source, which is a phenomenal. That product is only targeted to data engineers, hmm. not data scientists, data engineers, yeah, they're actually yeah. engineering stuff, re-architecting re their pipelines. Yep. That's not for the faint of heart. No. So, so who's in charge, the data engineers or the developers? Now, I mean, we would say the developer's always in charge, but now if they don't have the data, they can't do generative AI. So the data relationship to Gen AI is going to be significant flywheel. What's your uh, opinion on all this? Yeah, I think some of this goes back to one, um, when we, I have two things here. One is around the shift left, and the other one is around the cognitive load discussion. Um, I think when, as an industry, we said shift left, you know, you build it, you run it. When we shifted left, we shifted over all the stuff to do. Right? Um, to people who, um, honestly, it's like, they may not be specialists in all the functional areas, or be apprised of like all of the policies at the company, or government regulations, right? Yeah. That's why we have specialists. So when we shifted it left, what we should have done is, the guardrails is a great example, is that's, a, that's the right example of shifting left, like specialists in um, uh, regulatory governance, specialists around like which data, you know, privacy laws, which data we can use where, what the corporate uh, governance and security policies are. Bake that in and shift that left. So you're not configuring it later, but then a developer can sit there and they can do the business logic, they can manipulate data, right, yeah. um, that's available to them, um, but then do it within the sandbox that's approved. Instead of trying to like you know retrofit it later. So you're saying people were shifting left for shifting left purposes. They yes, weren't really doing it right. And it's like we shift left um, these steps and make it invisible <laughs> instead of like shift it left. So like now I'm going to have like Bob over there do it all. And that's yeah. maybe <laughs> like it's passing the problem to the next person. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's not right. <laughs> well, there's an interesting uh, conversation about putting the governance built in. From mm -hmm. is another, another big conversation. Another thing, another thing that's come up is the security uh, benefit with generative AI for the good guys and the bad guys. So that's come up a lot uh, yeah. this week. Um, not so much as much as Gen AI as with the Q and the co-pilot kind of vibe, but, but the question is, okay, this is going to be an acceleration of benefits, efficiency and productivity. For example, in the keynote, Adam Selesky showed an example with Q where mm -hmm. they essentially took a thousand Java applications and upgraded them in two days and then he hinted that .NET's going to go to Linux next. That's going to be like, that's his game changing like speed, like converting a thousand applications yeah. in two days, I mean it's incredible. That benefit there, and if they get .NET to Linux, think about the license savings there, just alone, a company can have. I mean, Microsoft's not going to be happy about that, <laughs> but, but this is the kind of things mm -hmm. that you can do that's good. Now the bad guys can do it too. Yep, and you, in a different way, right? I think it's the same, um, it's the same thing that we had when we had um, uh, all the software that would um, automate a lot, of, a lot of processes for us, right? Um, if we had our processes well worked out, well thought out, mm -hmm. we're automating the things that are right. If we, um, but you know, what automation does is if we haven't figured out the right way to do mm -hmm. things, makes us you know, do the things incorrectly yeah. faster and more often. Mm -hmm. So I think that similar type of logic applies um, with, with yeah. AI, right? Yeah, I got to ask you now, you've been in the industry for a long time, you know, you've seen the waves before. What out on the landscape gets you excited? I mean, take your Kanzu hat off for a second, and VMware hat off for a second, um, and look out on the industry. Um, and I always say I wish I was 25 again, because the market's hot for like these amazing AI opportunities. Uh, knowing what you know now, if you, we were 25 and we were going to go look and, and jump into a, a, a community and build something, what would you, what gets you excited out there? What are you seeing? I mean, as you mentioned those, easy, those things that we, you mentioned, mm -hmm. identify with shifting left, we can learn a lot, bring that to the table. Um, there's a speed game, certainly the pace of play is mm -hmm. high right now on this yeah, our hype cycles are very, very short now, yeah. right? Um, I definitely do think like what's possible with AI, like we've only just scratched the surface and, uh, on the ideas. We haven't thought about applying it to like what kinds of data. We're focusing it from a purely like individual productivity, but what if, like what 
what bigger questions could it solve for us mm -hmm. um, if we were to approach it, at, um, look at where we have large unstructured data sets. I commonly joke like, is this the, you know, the big data wish that we had all hoped would be true? And now we have it, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I think combining that with some of the movements around that we've had on IOT and IOT specifically, yeah. like with all these connected homes, connected whatever, what we're doing them and still it's kind of like industry silos. Yeah. I'm curious like how if we brought that together along with the power of creation from developers. Yeah. I think there's a, <laughs> what we've just unlocked is a whole new whole new level in this game yeah, yeah. where we're doing we're running through the simulation all over again. <laughs> it's legit next level. <laughs> no, it's interesting. Legit, yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting because you mentioned the big data and if you look at like even the, um, the dot com bubble, mm -hmm. uh, when that burst in yeah. 2001, everything that was hyped up actually happened. Just and later. Just later yeah. because it needed to percolate and boil up a little bit, but now you were saying, I think that's an observation, the smart home has been talked about in over 15, 20 years. Yeah. You know, automation and cars, yeah. starting to see some movement. So, so we might be at a flashpoint right now where this comes together. Those can intersect and it could be really interesting. Yeah, and I think that's the opportunity for entrepreneurs and, and the white spaces out there. Yeah, we'll see, I mean. I Funding mean, opportunity, there you hey, go. You know, hey, we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cube would, <laughs> goes into venture capital. <laughs> <laughs> we got some openings out there. Um, yeah, we're one being funding machine. Betty, thank you for coming on, great to have thank you. you. Thanks for being part of our community. We really appreciate you and uh, commentary and, and uh, at VMware, now part of Broadcom. That chapter is closed, new one's beginning. Yep. Thanks for coming on. Always a pleasure. Okay, we'll be back with more coverage here after this short break. Back to the studio in Palo Alto.